little bit, but not too much. You're going to uh, you're going to uh, have to sort of bear with me and. And since this is on the phone, uh, you'll have to Christina shout out if there's questions online. But um, you know, uh, this will work. We'll, we'll we'll make it we'll make it work. Um, so again, thanks for coming out. Really appreciate it. We'll do sort of an abbreviated since it's a small group today. And then if you have questions about solar, if you just want to, we can just kind of do a round table type discussion, choose your own adventure style um, uh, version of this so that like you get your questions answered. Um, so a couple things, if you're online, feel free to just chat if you want to ask questions. And this is going to be recorded. We're a nonprofit. Um, at our core, our, we're installer neutral, meaning we don't um, we don't actually work for any solar installer. We're here to help you make a decision about how to go solar. And we have a co-op that is an installer neutral group that is sponsored by Cuyahoga County Sustainability Office that helps you go solar. We'll talk about how that works and um, deadlines coming up real soon to sign up for that. Uh, it's, it's free to join. Basically, it's like a buyer's club for solar in the region. We already selected the installer. We're at the very tippy end of it. We closed this in position and right at the very end, Thanks to Dave's hard work, canvassing and getting the word out. In fact, how'd you guys hear about it? So this, Facebook. all right, Facebook, awesome. Email, Email. okay, great. Um, and uh, if, if online you wanna shout out about how you heard about this or where you're from, that'd be great because I can tailor this a little bit to where you're from if you want. So our whole goal here is to help you go solar, join together, fight for energy rights. We do a lot of C4 work. We do some work in a community to try to streamline processes around solar, um, solar laws, like we worked um, to get Korea to do better, better solar in their community, got rid of their putative solar laws, uh, working the state house to get laws sort of um, evened out across the state so that people can go solar easier, more places. That's kind of what we do as an organization, all revolving around rooftop solar and community solar, which we'll talk about. So we've been around for a while since 2007, we started in Mount Pleasant. That's our executive director up there. Really started in her living room. We did the first buyer's club right out of her house. Um, she figured out it was hard to go solar. She, she got a bunch of her neighbors together to screw it. We had to do all this work over a year's time trying to study and figure it out. This was in seven, much harder then to, to go solar. Uh, and that was the first co-op right out of her living room in DC. Then they did it in every single ward in DC. Um, and from there, they grew and grew and grew and grew. Now we're, in, I think, 12, 15 different states or 12 states, Puerto Rico in the, in the district. So we, um, we were, we're pretty operational coast to coast at this point, almost. We were uh, in Arizona as a furthest west state. So Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, Midwest, really well covered, Indiana, West Virginia. Uh, so solar works, solar works well in the Midwest, believe it or not. And we'll get to some of that. Yeah, we've helped a lot of people uh, over the course of that time. We do panels, we do like a, a solar, um, in fact, we're gonna do it probably next year, uh, really kick it off with a, um, uh, like a, we used to call them solar congresses, pull the other, together a bunch of solar enthusiasts around the state to do like a big solar fair. And we talk about, so we invite guests from around the country to talk about the latest technology and fun stuff to do with solar. Um, we'll probably get that next year once, um, you know, there hopefully no COVID uh, and we can actually plan something, right? Uh, so uh, again, just more on us and, and sort of what we've been able to do here in the state. A lot of installs, 500 homes, 517 homes as of today, I looked it up, pretty exciting stuff. So the whole point is we wanna help people go solar, fight for energy rights, um, and today we're really just going to cover like what it is to go solar. In fact, this is what we're covering: technology, economics, and then and then how the co-op itself works. That's 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 the gist. So, kind of fly through some of this and stop me if you have questions. If some of this kind of sparks interest or sparks um, some thoughts, let's let's dig into it because I'd rather spend time talking about what you want to talk about. So, when we say solar, we mean photovoltaic solar (PV). We call it, uh, and that just means that's the type of solar that you you put a panel on your roof. It collects those photons from the sun and it turns that into a direct current energy. You have an inverter that would convert it to AC and use it in your home for doing different things. Um, that's the type of solar. There's passive solar heating. There's different kinds of solar energy. You can use solar in different ways to do different things. We focus on solar that generates electricity. Uh, and that's, what, that's all we focus this, our organization on and these talks on. So the, the, the major component, but the biggest component and the most important component is the solar module or the solar panel, which are made up of um, all these different solar um, cells. There's about 72, if you can see that there, 72 or 60, depending on the size of the, of the panel, these little cells, each of them generate about four watts of electricity when the sun's at its peak. 
they're all connected together with filaments and they're sandwiched between a piece of glass and either steel, aluminum, sometimes two pieces of glass. Um, more and more, they're using lighter materials and thinner, stronger glass. So these panels, one panel is five by three, it's the size of American flag, right? And it only weighs about 40 pounds now, 38, 40 pounds. So they're pretty light actually. So um, we say that, and it's true right now, particularly solar weighs less than your roof loaded with four, four or five inches of snow. It used to be six inches now, now we're down to like four or five inches of snow. So most roofs, if not all roofs that can handle anything here in Ohio can handle the solar system. If they can't, there's also, also systems that are ballasted that have rigs that kind of go across the roof that do not put any weight or load on the roof. They distribute the weight down to load bearing columns or structures. So, uh, and there's an array right there. An array is a, a series of these panels or a set of panels that are connected in parallel depending on what you're trying to achieve um, voltage wise. And those are then connected to, uh, in fact, this is a, a picture of a system getting installed, uh, but all those panels are being connected to a, a racking system that uses flashing or some type of a mount that is either penetrating or non-penetrating. But if it's a penetrating system, usually on those asphalt roofs, the penetrations are below where the shingles kind of end there. So they're pretty well protected. Most installers, if not all, have a, a penetration warranty so that uh, there won't be any leaks. If there are, they'll come out and fix them within 10, 5, 10, 15 years, depending on the installer. So something to take a, keep an eye on when you're going to sign a proposal, sign an agreement, making sure that those installers have um, some type of roof penetration and, and labor warranty on top of the panel warranties. They're all going to want to send, sell you a panel warranty because that's just how the, the panels already come with 30 years production warranties, 20 or 25 years of, of warranty if that panel breaks, but you wanna make sure that the actual uh, install itself is also warrantied and that's through the installer. Works on all kinds of roofs. You'll see there's a shake roof in the corner. That's an asphalt roof. Uh, here's a one of those um, metal roofs with standing seams that have been, the, these are non-penetrating uh, racking system or clamped to those standing seams. There's a ballasted system that's weighted to the roof. Um, with cinder blocks, uh, still pretty light. Most roofs, flat roofs can, can handle a ballasted system without a problem. All the county arrays are ballasted uh, on roofs. The ground mounts aren't, they're, they're in cement, but, uh, and then ground mount. Yeah, those are just poles in the ground. Whoops, sorry, people online. <laughs> um, so you can tell that, that there's plenty of room under there to mow. Um, even like cattle uh, can graze under, um, under panels, if you have cattle at home, just, just in case. Uh, but it's important for farmers. They, um, you know, a lot of people think that you, you're going you're gonna to burn up your farmland, but you're not. There's a lot of plants too that, that grow in shade. It's called agrovoltaics. So you can actually do your farming and gardening and still have your solar array. It just depends. You just can't plant, you know, things that need direct sunlight all the time. Fun stuff. Any questions on some of that stuff? Mountain, what, what type of roof do you have? Uh, we got shingle roof. Okay, that's a good but, thing. Uh, so let's say the shingle roof you replace, how would that work? Yeah, um, we say that you should, yeah. So first we say that you should have at least five or 10, even 15 years life left in that roof. Ideally, as long, you know, it should be a, a newish roof because the system's gonna last 30 years, right? So if not, if you're gonna have to have your roof replaced at some point soon, you know, there's always built into these contracts. Um, they'll say they'll come out and replace it, take the, the, the system off, put it back for a fee. Sometimes that fee is a couple hundred dollars, sometimes a couple thousand, depends on the size of the system and the, the, the racking materials and things, but there's, there, it's not hard to take the system off and put it back, but pay attention to what that installer is gonna charge for that and kind of factor that into your, your thinking. Uh, if it's 10 years down the road, it might be worth just paying the $1,500, $2,000, whatever it's gonna to cost to have that system taken down and put back. But if it's in the next three, four, five years, maybe you wanna wait, do a system after it, or maybe not. Maybe you really wanna have that carbon neutrality and you wanna get things moving. You know, You can just make sure you budget for that that move that system removal uh, to have your roof replaced. So, yeah. Answer your question. Good. What kind of roof do you have? Shingle. Shingle. All right. Good. Well, shingle roofs. Dave, you you a shingle roof? Okay. Yeah. So uh, the other component of this, where we are in Lakewood. Yay! Just put on a metal roof. What's the rest of that question? It disappeared. <laughs> uh, you read it out when you find it there, Christine, for me. It says, we are in Lakewood and just put on the metal roof. How do we make sure we do not invalidate the roof warranty? Yeah, I would look at your roof warranty first um, and also talk to the solar installer about what equipment they're going to use to attach that. Uh, if, it, if it says that any roof penetration is going to invalidate that warranty, then 
then you'd want to make sure that the, the, the mounting system doesn't have any penetrating. Uh, if for some reason that warranty has included any like nothing shall be mounted to this or would void, void the warranty, maybe that would. But most of the time, they just don't want penetrations. And um, a lot of those racking, you could see here in the in the metal roof racking, they're, they're non-penetrating. They're just sort of clamped to the standing seams and can be removed even easier than um, you know any, any penetrating sort of system. So a lot of times these do not invalidate the warranty, but that's going to be specific to the warranty language. So um, string inverters, there's you've got to convert that energy what's coming off your roof. It can't just keep it in DC. It's got to be AC to be able to use it in your house. So string inverters are probably the, one of the more common technologies. I have that in my basement. It's just a, a box that converts all that energy coming off your roof to AC, right? And it's, a, it's just a big inverter box. Um, anymore, I think we're moving towards micro inverters, which are actually smaller units that go in the back of every panel and convert that a DC to AC right on your roof. Um, they can be a little bit more expensive. Sometimes they're price comparable depending on um, what the offering is on both ends, string inverter, micro inverter. Uh, and they both do the same thing. Um, and at the end of the day, you're gonna have the same efficiencies and everything. So like, I, again, I have a string inverter with some optimizers that kind of make the system run a little bit smoother. Um, all string inverters come with optimizers anymore. So that's most of the point to talk about. Uh, it just allows every panel to be controlled and, and, and monitored individually. Micro inverters do all of that in the inverter. And then that, po that power is coming off your house and AC and you don't need that big box in your basement either. Go straight into your electrical panel. I think that's the next slide. Um, and the electric panel then you know, disperses that throughout the house. If the grid goes down, however, at any point, if you don't have a battery backup, that solar is not going to keep running. It has to shut down in order to, um, in order to protect the folks working on the lines and to keep the, the grid sort of healthy. Uh, now you can have an isolator box and there's special types of inverters that have some built-in battery capacity where your, your solar system can keep running for, uh, for the day or whatever. But um, highly recommend that if you need, like emerge, if you're getting a, a solar system in order to be uh, off grid or to be up during an emergency situation or a blackout to, to then look at batteries. Alternatively, you can run a, a solar array with a, with a backup generator too. There's no reason why you couldn't do that either. Um, was there another question, Christina? Yes, one more. Hi, I have an old fuse electrical panel. Would the PV installer also be able to upgrade my panel to a regular breaker panel? And then you want to answer that question as a follow up to that. Yes, uh, you'd, you'd have to get it upgraded and the installer offers that. It's not free, of course, it's going to be, there's a, a flat rate, I think, for box upgrade. Um, so, and I don't, I don't remember what that is. I don't think we're technically supposed to share that either outside of signing up for the co-op, but that'll be disclosed once you sign it for the co-op. Um, would that upgraded panel cost be eligible for the federal tax credit as part of the installation cost? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, my gut says I think so, but don't take my word for it. Um, Christina, do you know the answer to that? You stumped me. We'll have to get back to them, but typically I've, I have the understanding that it can be when it's all part of within the cost yeah. of the solar system. That's a great question. Um, I know that the battery backup would be absolutely the EV charger. If you got an EV charger that's powered by the, the solar system, that would be covered. I have not had anybody specifically say that. And the law is written a little bit vague. So you, I, I would say we'll find the answer best we know it, what we're telling people. Number two, um, talk to your accountants about it and ask about the investment tax credit, how they interpret that and what they think you would claim. Um, I've even heard, we don't give this advice, but I've even heard that um, some accountants say, not us, some accountants say that you could include roof work in that, some types of roof work under that ITC. That's not our position. We, we don't have a position on that. We say, go to your accountant and ask them about that. Ask them if roof, roof repairs can be included on the 26%, 22% tax credit. Uh, and if that electrical upgrade can be. That's the answer. All right, so a couple of roofs work. So not all orientations work, by the way. You can't just have a roof that's, that's north facing with solar and you can't have a roof that's too shaded or that's too small. East, west works, south facing surfaces are best. So if you have a south facing roof, you're good. Mine's east, west, it works just fine. I got plenty of sunlight. I've got a six kilowatt size system on my roof. It chugs away all year long. Uh, so we measure systems in kilowatts, that's the size of uh, power. And then the, the power that it produces over time is kilowatt hours. So you look at your bill, you're gonna see kilowatt hours. That's how much energy that system produces over time, what you're charged for, 
uh, and also the credits you get through net metering. So um, any questions on direction of roofs, roof, talked a little bit about roof condition, roof warranties. Yeah, I talked about that online. Um, people often ask, you know, do solar panels work when it's shady or if there's snow or if there's cloud cover? No. Um, but the time, uh, the amount of time that snow sits on a roof in Northeast Ohio isn't a lot. It might be one total week of snow coverage on a roof spread out over most of the winter. Now, if it's a really bad winter, it could be a month, right? But those are usually rare, um, especially anymore. I did the math for, I think it was a last year through this, through this last snow, like in late March or whatever. And I had three or four days where I had zero production because of sun or because of snow. Um, but then the day after that, be really sunny, and I get in. and actually systems produce about 120 percent. Um, so they overproduce when it's cold, it's bright and cold, just because all the components when they're chilled, just like you know, we cool down superconductors to make them work more efficiently. Our systems just work more efficiently in the cold, so that actually works for our benefit up here. It's one of the reasons that Germany is one of the sort of countries that is using solar to produce most of its energy, even. Um, you know, panels do work well in, in cold temperatures, and the more efficient they get to through time. You know, we're up to about 20, 22% efficiency on panels. Pretty impressive. So that 20, 22% of the energy that's hitting that panel is actually being captured in electricity. Um, pretty neat stuff. And that, that's like industry-wide. There's, um, you know, panels that do produce more than that. Good question. In fact, is that the next thing? Sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's good. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch this real quick, just because I started talking about it. Kilowatts, kilowatt hours, understand the distinctions, two different things, measurement of size, measurement of volume. Uh, and then, you know, the average size system in Ohio, mine's six, it covers all of our needs throughout the course of a year. I'll talk about how that means and how that works. Um, here's a 4.2 kilowatt size system, what it might look like, you know, laid out in array format. Uh, each panel is about 350. Usually they get up closer to four or 450. Uh, I think that they're 370s, 371 units in this co-op. Um, so, you know, the panels collect the sun. Sun goes to the inverters either on the roof of the side of the house, the, your basement, then goes to the panel, your breaker panel, not not, not old school panel, um, once you get it upgraded. And then it goes to the meter. So this is all behind the meter. But if you're overproducing at any given moment, so say it's bright and sunny out, uh, middle of the day, you're producing maybe three more times energy than you're using. Uh, very common, especially at my house. We don't use a lot of energy in the middle of the day. That energy is actually going back through your meter and the meter is running backwards and you're getting a credit for it. It's called net metering. It's a statute, it's a rule. It's the secret sauce that makes this economically viable. It makes it work. Um, so you need bi-directional meters, which all we have, all utilities are required to install. Um, and then this bi-directional meter which actually give you uh, a credit if you're overproducing that month and or you'll they'll be billed for the difference. Uh, of electricity you used more than you produced that at the end of the month. Um, so it's basically using the grid as an accounting battery of sorts. Uh, and that's that's the math. So the electricity you use, say you use 300 kilowatt hours in a, in a year, you're doing pretty well. Uh, subtract the X electricity you export, your system might've produced 200 kilowatt hours that, that month. You're then only gonna pay for hundred kilowatt hours. And that would, be, that would be reversed. If you're producing more than you're using that month, you're gonna get a credit on your bill. Uh, in a given month. And for me, just for an example, seven or eight months out of the year, I'm, I'm usually at a negative. So I'm usually crediting. Um, and then the rest of the year, I'm drawing down those credits relatively quickly. By you know, December, January, at least by January, February, March, I'm back into the red and I'm paying for electricity, but it's like 30, $40 a month. Um, and then like even in December, October, it might be a dollar or a dollar 50 or negative a dollar, a dollar 50. Like we'll get close to breaking. At April, April's a big sunny month, it's cold, my system's producing a lot of energy, the sun's back kind of like on the right trajectory towards longer days, you know, I'm back in the black or I'm starting to create that credit again for next year. So true up in the middle of the year, um, July-ish, can't remember if it's end of June or end of July, true up means that's just when everything resets and then whatever's left in your account, they give you in a check basically. So they give you a small check, it's not a lot, it's 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks, something like that. But it is fun to get a check from utility for once you know, they'll, they'll pay me, you know, um, instead of me paying them the rest of the year. So that's how that works. It works well with NOPEC 2 and the green aggregation stuff. It, it all it all fits in there the same as it would if, if you were a non-NOPEC member, if that's a question. It comes up sometimes. So um, batteries, we talked a little bit about what happens when the grid goes down, your system's got to shut down, but uh, batteries have let you just keep the system up. Some reasons you might want to get a battery back up. They are expensive, by the way. I mean, and they've gone up through the 
um, through this increased everything right now, uh, supply chain issues and uh, inflation and all that, they've, they've certainly become more expensive, but um, they certainly work very well. And you wouldn't factor them into like the ROI on a system. We'll get into like the actual return on investment of systems. They're not so bad, but you throw in a battery that kind of screws that up, but you wouldn't get a battery for a return on investment anyways. Like a generator is never going to make money for you, but it's there for emergencies uh, mainly. So yeah. Yep. Generator could be added later or a battery could be added later. Um, anytime really. Yeah, so a solar array doesn't require a sub panel either. You just plug it straight into your, you need a couple of breakers in your breaker box. If you're gonna do a generator or something, they're gonna to have to put a sub panel in and that can all just be slotted in and the solar can then be piped into your sub panel or into your regular panel, depends on how you wanna set it up. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Only thing I'd say, make sure that when you get, the, if you're gonna get a string inverter and things, make sure there's enough space. Things are spaced out so you can kind of expand when you need to. Um, Storage, I really encourage, if you're thinking about a battery, check this out. We do, a, I think we do a phenomenal job. Our, our folks in DC put this together, a little um, homeowner's guide to storage. Um, it's probably one of the best out there. It really gives you the point by point what you want to look for and plan for. Um, you can also do EV chargers. These were optional in all co-ops. Um, you can even just join the co-op to get an EV charger. If you have solar already, they can kind of work with that system to just power. Since there's some inverters too that are that are they're built to have a uh, EV charger connected to the inverter, so you're only pulling from the uh, the solar, um, which is pretty cool. But that's always an option. So, anybody EV people yet? No, I got to plug in hybrid. That's about as close as I, uh, I've gotten so far. Um, so the economics. Solar has become less expensive. <laughs> I'll buy a lot. Uh, and even just in the last um, few years, it's become less expensive uh, up until like last year, then it kind of evened out. <laughs> uh, in fact, it's become a little tiny bit more expensive. Uh, not a lot, but a little bit more expensive the last year, as with everything else. Uh, most of that is in soft costs, the marketing and things. And this is kind of where we start talking about the co-ops, how they work and how they help with this saving money deal. We, by doing these buyers clubs, by the county supporting us, by us doing this work, kind of doing a lot of that marketing work for these installers. So and we're not charging you for it. So the installers are able to save some money there and they pass that savings on to you. And we, we generally save people about 20%, 15 to 20%. Uh, I got a pretty good call yesterday. The guy that did a ton of research uh, ended up going to the co-op and he, he, he laid it out pretty clearly about where other installers were and where the co-op was. Um, and we're doing pretty well. Um, in fact, we'll get to those specifics here in a second. You'd mentioned the investor tax credit, I think online. Right now, it's 26%. If you're going to get scheduled, likely these installs are going to happen next year. Um, and that's going to be in that 22% range. So important to realize that. Um, I don't know with this minute, mansion stuff yesterday, I don't know if there's any extension of that in there. I have not dug through that. I haven't had time. I'm hoping that. No? Did you look through it? Okay. Yeah, I know. That's exactly. It's on my phone. So a uh, big climate bill, $370 billion, $368 billion. We're hoping that the investment tax credit is somewhere buried in there. But I think we literally just later, like a few hours ago, got our hands on the actual copy of it. So we don't quite know. I don't know yet. If it is, these, these numbers could change in the positive, but we don't know that. So count on 2020, 22% of 2023 as your tax credit. And this is the this is the numbers. This is still based on 26% because we're in this year. Uh, the co-ops on average have been around $2.52. That's the price per watt. A number worth writing down. And in fact, it's in there, so you don't need to write it down. But it, you know, look at um, whenever you get a proposal, look at the dollars per watt that they're charging you. If they're not giving you dollars per watt, you can do the math. Look at the size of the system. If it's a eight kilowatt size system, divide eight thousand, you know, divide them and the amount by eight thousand to get your dollars per watt for that system. And then use that one number to compare out the other proposals, right? Uh, so if they're charging you seventy thousand dollars and they're talking about how this does that, that, and the other, and it's only a ten kilowatt size system, you know, seven dollars a watt. You know, that's not no nobody that nobody should be paying that for even the Cadillac of systems, right? Um, but there are installers out there that are trying to charge people way too much. So I the rule of three right now is a good rule. If you if three dollars, dollars ten cents per watt probably would be. Uh, where the average of the state is right now for how much is it. And right now, two, 250 is almost impossible to come by. Co-op's running around 270, I think, or 275 a watt, something like that. And that's a good deal, right? So that's 25%, 25 cents less than the state average right now. 
Um, so we're, we're doing okay still. Um, but yeah, so things are sort of moving a little bit north. We're hoping they'll come back down soon. But over the, over the course of the life of that system, if you factor in that tax credit and everything, uh, you can expect an eight kilowatt size system, which I think is actually a better example, seven kilowatts in, in the booklet. Most systems in Ohio are seven or less. Um, you know, you're going to save at least $1,000, if not $1,200 over the course of a year on your energy bills. Uh, and then that's going to come out to about, you know, uh, a break even point of 11 or 12 years on a system. Um, not so bad. So that, you know, over that period of time, that's how much you're going to save. It's gonna, and then over the life of that system, you're going to actually be in a net profit zone, um, which is pretty cool. So that ROI isn't so bad. I tell people, you can always go, go find something else to invest in. You're probably, I don't know right now. Usually you can go and find something else that's going to make you money, right? This is probably, if, you, if you're trying to make money on your solar system, this is probably just not the way you want. You're going to go somewhere else, go to the stock market or somewhere else usually to make money. But if you have other goals, most people want to do this to, to not only save money, but to lead a more sustainable life, to just, you know, not pay the utility, <laughs> you know, and be more resilient uh, or, or reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, those should be the motivating factors, but it's kind of nice to know you're also making a pretty smart financial decision if you're able to get a, you know, one a deal around that, that state average, three dollars per watt, three ten per watt probably now. There's some financial mechanisms out there if you haven't thought about that yet. Um, I'd say like home equity refinance, having cash and CDs, borrowing against, you know, borrowing is the the, the major way to do it, and borrowing against the asset of your home or assets like that uh, is probably the most common uh, way that folks do that or they have cash. Obviously, it's not a bad way to use cash. Um, installers also offer financing. Every installer has some financing option. I tell people, be careful to read the fine print. We like to advertise a partner of ours that does great work and that's Clean Energy Credit Union. Um, you know, We're installer neutral, but we know this group pretty well and we're, we're actually happy to tell people to go to the website look at their rates they actually publish the rates um, and you can see what a good rate is out there um, for 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 solar uh, and they're a partner of ours so if you go to the co-op or even just call us if you want to use their services for some reason you know you have to have an account there or whatever but we can help you connect with them if you need them um, but at least use that as a touchdown use that as a good sort of baseline for what a good collateralized type loan is right now for solar and then ecolink i'm actually here in cuyahoga county so it's not on the sheet, it, you have the help loan. In fact, they, Dave, do you have any help loan sheets? Are they in that, is it on that flyer or no? The help loan information? Oh, it isn't. How dare we? That's uh, nah, okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. But if you wanna write down help loan, uh, it's the Cuyahoga County offices, office, uh, the financial offices loan product. You know about it, heard about it. It's neat, you should look it up. Um, home value, forget the home value top end on that. All right. I'm sorry. It's good for any home repair. There it is. The help loan. So I just Googled uh, Cuyahoga help loan. And you'll see, I, th I think it's higher than this now. Home values are probably, it's probably gone up from that. I don't think that's the true number, but we'll say it's 250,000. And it pays for, it's, it's a subsidized loan. It pays for 3% of your interest. So if you qualify for like Dave said, a 5% loan or whatever, it'll bring it down to a 2% loan. And I've seen people get it below two, but I don't know what it's like now with, it, with the rates where they are. Certainly a good way, take the free money if you qualify for it, you know, take the free interest. The free subsidy if you if you qualify for it. So unless you live in um, one of these communities, that's interesting. Very important program. Any questions on this stuff so far? Financing before we get to the uh, the co-op. There's also the um, eco link loan. I think, the, and that's with the county treasurer's office. Oops, it's right there. Eco link subsidized loan. I think the help loan does a better job. Uh, it's, it's more accessible and it's a flat rate. Um, Ecolink, I think, is a little bit more, it's harder to qualify for different loan terms that aren't quite as favorable as the county help loan, but you can check that out. So that's the Ohio Treasurer's Office. Same idea. So the co-op, 
basically, stellar neutral, like we said, we want to help people go solar through this buying process. It's, it's basically like getting 50 year friends or 100 year friends together, walking into a, a company and saying, give us your best deal. It's going to get you a slightly better deal than if you just walked in on your own, right? Um, there's, there's no uh, commitment to join. We just want to get you a solid proposal. You could take that around and, and shop it around too and figure out if that's exactly the company you want to go through. Um, but it's one way to do it. We definitely want to make sure you have a solid option coming out of this. So right now, we've already gone through the process of the co-op a lot. In fact, we're at this point here, sign up deadline, like that's this week. So we're really towards the end, which is not a bad thing for those of you like here now, because you can sign up today and literally get a call from the installer next week because they're trying to get through the last of the folks that have signed up through the end of the month here, through this month. Um, and that, that installer is Yellow Light. There's nothing, I think. So if you've already talked to Yellow Light, maybe um, you might know of them. They're, they're downtown Cleveland. They're a good company. They, they do fairly good work. That's the only installer this co-op works with. Yeah, We're going to launch another co-op probably towards the end of the year for 2023. Um, maybe even in 2023, we haven't picked a date yet. Have we? No, probably, probably between the holidays. And then that's going to have a separate selection process. It's, it's likely to be a different installer because every, every co-op picks a different installer or can pick a different installer. So, but this co-op already selected um, yellow light. So then you'll get that proposal. You have 30 days to sign it or not. If you don't sign it, it's fine. There's no obligation to do that. Um, and then you'll get installed and then we'll have a big party, a pizza party. We'll all decide to get together and we'll um, look at our systems and we'll hang out and, and eat pizza. It'd be fun. So that's basically it. If you want to join, you can go to this website. I think Dave, do you have some sign-up sheets? I think I do. Uh, if, you, if you want. Yeah. It's a good way to do it. Give other questions. These are the last of my pens, Dave. I got like six left. You can have them here. They're all the stuff. Oh my goodness. So here's these. If you're interested at all. Oh. Um, yeah, so that's the spiel. I mean, there's a lot more things we do. I'm not going to get into it because it's already getting late, but um, you know, we have a 30 million roofs campaign, all kinds of things we do on in, in climate world for folks. So We'd love to connect with you on that. If you're really passionate about this stuff, we want to get involved in helping the world go green. Um, we are one of the major organizations fighting to get more solar out there and make sure that individuals are part of that solution uh, by doing solar at home or advocating for things like community solar. So if you learn more about us, there's our actual website here, Solar United Neighbors backslash Ohio. Uh, that's it. That's my whole spiel. So uh, any questions? Any final thoughts? Anything else you want to talk about? We can always chat offline here too after. Correct. Yeah, at this stage, even if you're kind of sure, not quite sure, I'd probably still sign up if it were me just to get the quote. Um, I mean, if you're really sure you're not going to do it this year, you know, don't bother, but, uh, or, or, or early next year. Um, but, you know, it would pay to have a, a decent quote and we don't know what prices are, are doing. They may come down, they may go up, I don't know. So um, yeah, I'll get a quote, why not? Thank you. Hi everyone online, thank you for joining us. I'm sorry for the, can you hear, if you guys are still out there, feel free to shout out a question if there's any questions in the chat. Um, anything left, I can answer that, I don't see any. Sorry for the technical stuff, I'm glad you could hear me still. So you, Christina? It's me. No, I, um, thank you. That's what we got. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Yeah. Did it, did it work okay? You guys could hear it and everything? It was like not horrible? Mm, no. Everything perfect. <laughs> perfect. That's what I like to hear. All right. Well, thank you, Christina. I really appreciate you. We'll talk to you here in a bit.